G'day ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Aussie Starcraft where we are casting more games from Dreamhack Winter that took place recently. We've been casting our way through the group stages of that tournament and uh, bringing you a Game 3 in the great Best of 3 series between Liquid Tasia and SOS. So in the bottom right hand corner is our Red Terran, it is in fact Liquid Tasia. In the bottom left hand corner is our Blue Protoss player, it is SOS. Now these players don't really need a whole lot of introduction if you've uh, been watching the WCS at all this year is a very uh, consistent performance from both these players. SOS was an absolute force to be reckoned with in Protoss and well we all know know and love Tasia and his Terran shenanigans so both excellent Korean players in their own rights playing for Team Liquid and Team Wungjin Stars respectively. Now it actually looks like SOS is going to be trying some sort of proxy here dropping a proxy gate up near the third base location of Liquid Tasia. Tasia actually going for a gas first opening so likely uh, to grab a Reaper for some scouting. Now while we're waiting for the game to get underway, I'd just like to thank everyone for their feedback recently. Had some great feedback both on Reddit and uh, here on the YouTube channel, just various things to help as a cast now. We really uh, appreciate that sort of useful feedback. Sometimes I get quite funny feedback like people say I don't like your voice and well that's all well and good but as you'd know I, I was born with a voice I can't necessarily change everything about it but uh, some people gave particular feedback that uh, has been very helpful so we really appreciate that appreciate everyone that takes a chance it takes the time to either like the video or share them with others really appreciate that I noticed someone shared a video this morning before I'd even finished uh, changing the uh, description and all the other things that we uh, put down below the video so I really appreciate that it's it's the community that uh, makes StarCraft 2 so much fun so appreciate you guys taking the time to do that and it looks like Tej is actually scouting out now so momentarily he's going to come face to face with SOS's base and realize that there is a cyber core but in fact no gateway over here but we do have a zealot being chrono boosted out so this this zealot uh, will be up in Tej's base and there'll, there'll be very limited marines left to deal with it so particularly devastating if the Terran player is a lot of Terran players have gotten a little bit greedy they grab a single marine or a single reaper and then go reactor it's this sort of a proxy gateway play that's quite devastating because you have a single marine left to uh, defend against against the push and you, you end up with a zealot and a stalker and they, they'll easily kill that marine and then uh, romp their way through the defenses. Looks like Tasia's actually uh, picked up a quick factory using that gas, dropping it into a factory and going to have a widow mine. So it's actually the ideal defense to this sort of play. You'll have several marines in there that you can micro around. You also have a widow mine that can either one shot the zealot or the stalker. So we'll see uh, how SOS responds to this and if he's able to make the most of it. Second zealot uh, moving out as well. You can see the stalker's able to really really uh, earn, his, earn his keep here. He can continually micro against the marines. But uh, this this widow mine unfortunately unburrowed, and that's 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 going to make it very difficult to hold here. Could have used that widow mine to one shot the stalker, but unfortunately very hard to get it in position with the zealot. So you can see uh, Tasia doing a great job of holding these zealots off with the SCVs, and uh, now he's managed to get the widow mine into a position where it can cut off any reinforcing stalkers. So oh, nice picks off that stalker there. So very uh, cost effective defense there from Tasia. If we look at Look at the units lost tab. We can see that uh, we can see that 250 resources were done to Tasia, but we can see that it was actually 425 that was done to SOS. So very cost-effective uh, defense there from Tasia. And if 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 you weren't weren't paying attention, I'd, I'd suggest re-watching that portion of the video. Uh, often Protoss players or Terran players get themselves into a routine where they've found a safe build order because Protoss tend to not be aggressive at that stage of the game and they find themselves losing to those sorts of aggressive proxies really quickly so if you missed how Tasia managed to do that just go back and rewatch that section of the video see a drop here Tasia just trying to do a bit more damage we don't mind they're getting another kill so that's progressively uh, progressively racking up the kills here Stalker able to clean up the last of that but unfortunately there's, uh, there's no detection until this observer finishes but it should be out in just, a, just enough time to grab that uh, Widow Mine before it can detonate again. 
Fantasia taking this opportunity to grab his expansion, building on the low ground. SOS likewise grabbing his expansion as well. SOS converting to a warp gate in the middle of the map, but uh, that's likely to get cleaned out as these marines go for a rove. If they decide to have a scout around, they should find that without uh, too much difficulty at all. But no, I, I like SOS's thinking on this map. Whirlwind's frequently considered one of the larger maps, and players go for quite greedy openings. Particularly, you'll see Terran players doing a command centre on the low ground or walling in with the command centre at the top of the ramp quite early on. And so I really like that uh, attempt from SOS to put on the pressure quite early and uh, exploit Tasia's uh, decision making. But Tasia obviously being a little bit more cautious. And uh, Whirlwind as a map in general has so many great spots to hide that proxy. So all sorts of locations down here or up behind the third where players are unlikely to scout it. The Tasia trying to put on some pressure at the ramp. SOS great force fields, consistently good force fields from SOS. Tasia is going to use an opportunity to just do a little bit of damage to the Nexus, or at least its shields, and uh, zip on out of there. Tasia's upgrading with his orbital. You see his bar uh, barracks swapping out now. He'll grab his combat shield and his stim pack. Oh, actually, stim pack and Marauder slow. So obviously that that's a choice for versing Protoss against Zerg. You would almost always see the combat shield upgrade. But uh, against Protoss, things like the Marauder Slow, very useful. So we went, we went through a stage of uh, tournament play where you next to never see that Marauder Slow in play. But obviously uh, against Protoss, very useful. Things like Stalkers that can kite your Marines all day. You can slow them down, pick them off much more readily. So interesting little little decision making between between these players. Remember it is game three in a best of game best of three series. So these players have uh, been exposed to each other for two previous games. Uh, they were great games if you've if you've missed them. They they were excellent games. We can't cast everything here on the channel. It's just uh, too many games for for one man to cast. But they they were great games and so the, these players already are fairly familiar with each other and what they can expect. Tasia now moving out with his factory, going to be doing a bit of scouting. That's fairly common once a player elects to go either mech, you'll see him move out with the barracks, or once they uh, decide to go bio and they've produced the couple of units they want out of the factory and got their starport, they, they tend to move it around a little bit more, use it to fulfill a purpose. So you'll notice there's no waste in the builds. We have, we'll consistently have most of the production facilities on both players being used. I'll try and leave that tab up for you so you can see uh, what's in production constantly for our players, but you can see it's a consistently a Marauder, two Marines, or two, mar two Marauders, two Marines, and a couple of Medivacs. So the, ra a lot of players, or a lot of mistakes that are made at low level of play, is players throw down four, five, six production facilities and only produce out of half of them. You'll see Tasia very carefully build the amount of production he needs to uh, macro effectively off the number of bases he has. And same with SOS, you consistently see him warping in units, grabbing his Colossi. A big drop from uh, Tasia actually right on top of this Protoss wall is a very aggressive choice there. Not uh, not always something you see. You can see uh, SOS actually picking up that Colossus so that it can't be sniped. That's an interesting, interesting engagement, choosing to drop on that. You see Tasia actually lost uh, quite a lot out of that because of the heavy Zealot composition. And you'll see that Zealot legs already on the way. So SOS are uh, going to be using Zealots as, as the linchpin of this force for the for the, for the moment. Already already got the one Colossi out. But uh, I, I imagine we'll be seeing some Zealot Colossi action for for the short term. Though we do already have the Templar Archives in place, so we may actually not see any Colossi beyond this first one, depending on what we see Tasia react with. If Tasia reacts with a heavy amount of Vikings, we'll see SOS uh, decide that a Storm is the way to go, and if if uh, if Tasia produces no Vikings at all, SOS may, may well go for the uh, greedy DPS option of a couple more Colossi. So we will see. It's quite a quite a scary force moving in from Tasia here. Not a lot of force fields not in the way, so you can't uh, block off that bottom ramp. 
And we have uh, Tasia choosing to focus down the geyser. Great choice. It does significantly limit the amount of expensive Protoss units that you can warp in. Esso has been forced to turn that into an archive. It is tank uh, an archon, sorry, not an archive. <laughs> an archon that's actually going to tank quite a lot of the damage. Managed to survive with 2 HP, so a very narrow escape for that archon. Managed to tank 350 damage though for the Colossus, which was fairly important. The Colossus up to 5 kills already. Tasia consistently putting on a lot of pressure here, just constant production. You see he's added on two barracks now, but once again we see that every production facility in Tasia's base is producing something. Tasia's going to snipe that gas again. If you're wondering why he's doing that, Protoss forces, or particularly the forces you need to deal with heavy gateway aggression, or heavy marine marauder aggression like this, is gas heavy units, things like the Glossus, things like the High Templar, consistently having those guys are sniped. This is quite inconvenient for SOS. If we look at the income tab, we can see that his gas actually on par with a Terran player. and That's not exactly where you want to be at this, this uh, well, at any stage of the game, because Terran's going to comfortably produce mineral heavy units and be able to put on a very uh, cost-effective amount of pressure, particularly as the, up as the upgrades come along. And we do, uh, we do uh, have 1-1 one, one already on the way for, uh, already finished up for Tasia. SOS actually got the two armor currently, which is doing a lot of work on, on those zealots, keeping them alive uh, much, much longer than you would ordinarily expect. Proxy gateway's finally being cleaned up, but we've got SOS being a bit sneaky with some zealots and a warp prism at the back of the base, so both players are uh, great multitasking, cleaning up uh, various parts of the map and putting pressure on. Viking now following up on this warp prism, but not before the zealot can chase off these mules. And that, that's actually quite a big loss for Tasia. You could expect these to mine about 250-odd 200, uh, more minerals than, than they otherwise will, because half their life was spent running backward and forward, so you really want to uh, try and preserve those mules. So Tasia taking, taking the opportunity to try and push the front. A scan, make sure there's no... Uh, no no Dark Templar or other sneaky things waiting to sneak up. SOS is great at hiding High Templar around the fringes of the engagement and storming you from the side. So, see Tasia's medevac count's actually quite quite high at the moment. 11 medevacs. It's going to keep these marauders in the fight for a long, long time. Oh, feedback there is going to th going to thin the pack just a little bit. Take out two of those medevacs, but. Keeping these medevacs alive very important. It allows your starport to be able to produce things like the Vikings to deal with the Colossi. It also allows you to keep things like the HP heavy marauders. Oh, unfortunately, SOS moving out, and Tasia's going to be able to snipe the Colossus. And with with that, uh, SOS will actually GG out of the game. So, what a great read from Tasia, knowing he could swing up and threaten the third base and uh, bait SOS out of the out of his base, you saw that Tasia was in position with the with the reinforcing marauders, able to sweep in and slow and pick off that Colossus. So great play out of both these players, both Liquid Tasia and SOS. Great play from them. I loved uh, Tasia's decision making in that game. I think he's just one of the quintessential Terran players of our era. I, I think he's production, uh, you can just see just how tidy his build is, even at this stage of the game, production consistently queued in all his buildings, and uh, just maintaining that very steady pressure. You'd see him in a position to be able to drop quite easily if he wanted to into the main base, and we saw him exploit that in this location early on to, to really uh, put SOS on the back foot. I don't think SOS was expecting those zealots to be dropped on. Not not that it went uh, particularly well for Tasia, but it certainly uh, made SOS feel very vulnerable, throwing up static defense like these cannons to try and defend his production. So uh, yeah, I think I think a great game out of Tasia, and that's uh, he's obviously in fine form for this tournament. We've seen him win a couple of these group stage series already, so he will be through into the next round. And uh, SOS, though, plenty of chances left to redeem himself and carry on in the tournament, either in the winner's or the loser's bracket. So, hope you guys enjoyed this cast. Uh, let us know down below uh, if you have any feedback or just what your favourite moment in the game was. And we'll catch you in the next cast. Going to be doing a fair bit of casting today and tomorrow. Want to get through the group stages and start casting the uh, subsequent rounds of the tournament. So, thanks for tuning in, and we will catch you. In